Hey everybody, Blockman Codes here. Today I'm doing a really short video on how to fix the error, fail with error STF, when you're dealing with Uniswap V3. And this can be a little frustrating if you don't know what you're doing. So I've got some code here from a previous tutorial that I recorded, and I've intentionally removed some of the code to cause this error. So I'm going to run this now. Okay, and I get this error, fail with error STF. You also notice that when you get this error, you don't get any of the tokens you were hoping to gain, but you still burn some gas. So it's definitely something you want to avoid. So you see this horrible error and it's not descriptive at all. So the sensible thing is to go to the error codes for Uniswap V3. Um, but you search all of the codes here and there's nothing that says STF as an error code. So then you do some Googling and you come across this post on Reddit where people in the comments are talking about slippage. And now you're even more confused. And if you're lucky enough to find your way to the transfer helper docs at uniswap.org slash protocol slash reference slash periphery slash libraries slash transfer helper and you read the right text you might see this that the safe transfer from function transfers tokens from the targeted address to the given destination and it errors with stf if the transfer fails now it's also not very descriptive so you may not know what this actually means what it means is that this function is called to transfer your tokens to Uniswap, and that can fail. How can that fail? Well, if you have an approved Uniswap to access tokens from your wallet, it's going to fail. I'm here on the IEP 20 token standard, and there is this method called appro approve. And you need to call this method and approve Uniswap to access tokens in your wallet before you can actually do a swap. So you'll call approve, you'll pass in the address of the swap router because that's the contract that we use to execute our swap. And then you're gonna pass in an amount of a token that you want to give Uniswap access to. And you are gonna call this method on the ERC20 token that you are passing into Uniswap. So somewhere before executing the transaction, you need to add some code like this. I'm going to get the response here, though you don't actually need it. I'll call await token contract zero in my case. And token contract zero is just the contract of address zero initialized in my code and address zero in my case is the address of wrapped ether. So here what we're saying is on the wrapped ether contract, we're going to call connect and we're going to pass in our connected wallet. And this is basically just a signer. And then on that, we're going to call prove. And here we'll pass in the swap router address, which I've defined above um, in this code here. And then I'll pass in the amount of wrapped ether in way that I want to give the swap router access to. So because it's in way, it would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And this would give the swap router access to one ether in my wallet. If we rerun this code now, and we look at ether scan for our wallet, we can see that the transaction was now a success. And that's all there is to it. It's really frustrating if you don't know about this, but once you understand it, it's very simple. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time.